I can move to the next presentation and the data set is uh, monitoring mobile video delivery to Android devices and the presenter Philip Eitenberg. Yeah. Yeah. study or our data set paper is quite related to the one before uh, um, but we are doing the monitoring on Android devices and this was some joint work with Michael Hamacek, Marcel Grossmann and Udo Krieger. Our goal was to compare and evaluate um, different video dissemination techniques in mobile scenarios. And os of course, um, we took HTTP streaming. Due to its ubiquity, its um, use, or, or its the, the benefits are quite clear. So it can use the HTTP and the, its caching infrastructure. It has a very, um, ease for NAT and firewall traversal and therefore we, we took YouTube as the largest CDN probably worldwide. And usually you have one video server serving a receiving node but you can have multiple video servers as well. And as another approach we also are interested into peer-to-peer -peer streaming which is currently not really relevant, I have to admit, um, because there are some quite uh, showstoppers, like the need for the peers altruism when it comes to the battery usage, um, the traffic caps, the need for nut traversal, and so on. And from the perspective of one single peer, it's the same, we're getting the data from um, a multitude of serving peers and um, the peer might relay the video data to other receiving peers. Um, one outcome of our study was that when Sobcast, we took Sobcast, which is quite popular in the wired internet, um, when it's operating in a 3G network, then it's not relaying any data, which makes definitely sense due to the traffic caps. Though, so, um, we developed a simple mobile app for Android devices which is able to monitor and lock geo-coordinates, network information and other related metrics of a particular specified Android app. So you see, we have the longitude, we have the latitude, um, the number of updates, operation per measurement interval, operator ID, operator name, received signal strength, cell ID, lag ID, network type, and so on. We have also included um, the volume of transmitted bytes per measurement interval. We try to include uh, battery stats, but that's not so, um, that was not so successful. Um, it's like the log files and the trace files also available on our website and on the um, Trace website. Though, so this is what we did. We had these two um, applications, YouTube Subcast. We have three Android devices. Um, one was stationary, connected to the HSPA network of the German Telecom. One was connected um, via Wi-Fi, and another one was traveling from A to B, and then in the next trace back from B to A. And we did this for both applications. So um, our trace consists of 12 PCAP files and 12 log files. This is the measurement route. Since we have the geo coordinate, you can put that into GPS visualizer, for, I for instance, and see where you approximately moved in the measurement run. Um, 
to get the TCP, uh, the, the, the TCP dump files or the PCAP files, you have to root the device. So that's what we did. Here you see some very high-level metadata about the um, YouTube traces. I don't want to discuss that now. Um, this is about the subcast traces. This is, as I said, much more interesting. Here in the Wi-Fi case, you see um, the device is really participating in the data dissemination. It's, it uploads data to other peers, whereas when it's connected via 3G, it's not uploading video data to other peers. So how is it useful? We saw some use cases already. The application developer um, can get a feeling about the bandwidth dynamics, uh, about the fluctuations, about handover effects, about vertical handovers, and we are mainly interested um, about the teletraffic modeling, and therefore you use usually packet lengths, inter-arrival times, instantaneous rates, and you could, for instance, um, plot the distribution of the inter-arrival times or try to model that. You can have a look into the packet lengths over time. This is for a tr subcast trace or um, compute the instantaneous rates, rank them, and we are right now working at a model, when you see the threshold, we are trying to limit the sending rate and see the outcome, because when you go over the threshold, um, you might have the risk of losing packets, but more on that is in the paper of our Russian colleague, Natalia Markovic. So further interesting um, things is to look at YouTube's transmission patterns. So we saw in most of the traces a progressive download approach, but we also saw in some of the traces a progressive download with byte range requests. You can for sure um, plot the throughput. On the left, um, we have the mobile 3G cases, and there you see, for example, the effect of a vertical handover when we switch from UMTS to Edge, and of course, the throughput is going down. Or here in the right upper case, we have a, the Wi-Fi cases where we see quite interesting um, patterns. You might think this is some byte range um, due, to term, due to some byte range requests, but it wasn't, um, so we didn't uh, look any more in the data. This is uh, some future work. Um, also quite interesting, when it comes to the load of the infrastructure, this is the number of open connections subcast is uh, having, um, having in both directions, in and out, so you see um, Subcast puts much more load on the network infrastructure. Um, yeah, with four to five open connections um, per average in the 3G cases um, and much more in the Wi Fi cases. So, to conclude, um, for, mo for mobile connections, the most constrained resources are the wireless spectrum in the RAN and the battery of the mobile device. We think it's quite important so, uh, that the video delivery is optimized, and to do that, we think also that's important to investigate and to deeply understand the details of the dissemination process. And I want to conclude my talk with a last appeal for um, all the providers of network measurement traces. Please include at least partly PCAP traces um, most often you're interested in inter-arrival times and packet lengths, um, but there are so many tools out there um, that work with PCAP traces and why always invent the wheel anew. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Yes. 
just a short question. Go back one slide. What, what is the dissemination process? I am not sure that I understand what you are, what you are meaning with this. Just uh, the, the video data delivery. Do you mean uh, do you mean uh, so, so individual steps of the video delivery, or do you mean general traffic? So what what do you mean exactly? In our case, video delivery. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. I'm wondering um, if you're doing so. Like it's it's not a second talk. That's uh, basically about. Uh, performing uh, application layer measurement on mobile networks based on uh, TCP It's transport. not only application layer. So yeah, I'm just wondering whether you experience a high variation between uh, like two repetitions of the experiments because like the, the throughput is very much determined by uh, TCP's uh, congestion control which goes quite crazy on, a, on a mobile networks like you have spurious timeouts, you have uh, physical packet losses and all this stuff. So do you experience a lot of uh, variation between any two repetitions for the same position and the same, uh, yeah, like performing the same measurement at the same position twice? Well, the question is if we see the same patterns at yeah, the yeah, same whether location. It, whether there's large variation between okay. any two or whatever measurements. So we, we didn't do so many um, measurement runs to answer your questions. But what we found is uh, that uh, there is a high variance in it. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Thank you very much for the presentation. <laughs>